Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward to what might happen in the next week. And hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. All right, well, the stock market, well, floundered most of the week this week. There were some minor upside attempts, but most of them failed. This is definitely a tone change for the stock market from recent weeks, which was essentially all buyers pretty much since the election time. Uh, in the background news was uh, hacks and uh, security breakdowns and uh, battles uh, with uh, how the Obamacare replacement uh, is actually really a viable replacement. Uh, so lots of background uh, discussion there as far as uh, politics and economics goes. And uh, that uh, maybe grabbed some of the focus from the stock market and maybe made some of the buyers insecure. Uh, believing that uh, all of Donald Trump's programs were going to be uh, giving a big lift to everybody. Of course, uh, that's probably true, but some of that might take a lot of time and a lot of anguish before we get to see it. Um, so uh, there has been a huge rally here in the stock market uh, since the election. S&P's uh, up 323 points, 15.5% uh, gain, astounding since November 8th. And maybe it's just that the buyers are getting tired and want to start locking down some gains. So the stock market, we would say, was uh, weaker this week. Uh, it's actually the first time in six weeks that we're going to get a down week, uh, likely in the S&P 500, uh, as we're seeing really an overall market that was pretty mixed and softer. Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P uh, 500, uh, down fractionally on the week. The, uh, the NASDAQ around unchanged as it did a little better on Friday. And the Russell down over 2% on the week as that one has continued to be the weakest of all of the indexes. Bond market under huge pressure this week. Of course, we're coming to the Fed meeting uh, this week. 30-year bonds down three full points. Uh, the 10 years uh, down also significantly on the week, and the yield on the 10-year pops over the 260 market. Mark, I think we're probably going to see 280 uh, before you know it, and maybe sometime this year, uh, 3% on the 10 years. So um, this is a time that we think that the bond market has got some pretty severe trouble. We did a video on that on Thursday, so our members can take a peek at that. Uh, so a uh, Fed meeting uh, this week, Tuesday and Wednesday. We will get the news out on Wednesday. Uh, the rate increase is pretty much written in stone. I can't see them getting uh, past Wednesday without a rate increase. Uh, I know this is a very gradualistic type Fed that we have right in here. Other Feds might have raised this a half a percent uh, at this time this week based on, well, strong employment numbers uh, and uh, better inflation numbers are really all around the world. Uh, but we're going to probably only get a quarter percent by this very dovish Fed that we have right now. Still, we're very close to what I think is a short-term bottom in the bond market. And uh, again, in our uh, member videos, we talk about a bond rally, at least a rebound coming uh, sometime starting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the dollar um, that chopped around uh, had a slump on Friday, the euro popping on the upside, focus on the Dutch election and the fact that maybe the euro is going to survive all of this. So uh, euro, definitely the strongest 
of all of the currencies uh, for these last few days. And uh, for our member short-term view, uh, you're going to see some interesting um, big jumps in momentum and strength in the euro currency. So uh, that uh, and is in alignment with our analysis that there's some pretty big risk for the dollar here coming forward. Gold and silver cracked. Um, they uh, it's it's about right now the focus on higher interest rates, uh, and uh, I think that the the weaker dollar that's kind of that's coming up soon is going to put at least a short term end to this correction we're getting in the precious metals now and also get a rebound in there now there is a good correlation between the euro and precious metals generally when you get some strength coming in in the euro well the precious metals are not far behind and we're going to be talking about bounces in the precious metals coming up soon uh, oil collapsed basically there was a big breakdown in there. It's down $3.50 for the week. It's about inventories increasing. And uh, because the you know the price got up into the low 50s, well, sale production uh, picked up pretty significantly. So all of that was bad for oil, and oil had a big breakdown week. Uh, to our surprise, breaking some significant numbers, we had been positive in there, believing it was forming uh, a inverted head and shoulders uh, that might be the case but it looks right now like we may have some months of struggle here for the oil market before um, we can get a big resumption on the upside our target for the year is in the 70s in oil I know that's pretty extreme well it's going to take some corrective period in here to get done with before that happens and we still think that's going to happen sometime late in the year so again, this is a big week. Uh, the Dutch election, the debt ceiling, uh, the Fed, uh, all of the drama around uh, the POTUS, Donald J. Trump, all of his programs, all of the pushback, conservatives that are fighting back. Um, so, you know, all of that uh, uh, with the stock market starting to struggle, we've started to see the internals of the market beginning to weaken. Uh, talk about that in our uh, at the end of the show for the stock market in the short term view. We'll go far as declaring that this leg in, the, in this, this big up leg we have ahead in the stock market is over. So what we believe now is that we're going to get into a very choppy, much more highly volatile situation uh, in the stock market. The question is, um, how deep will a correction be? We have talked about it being in excess of 5% once it took a hold. Based on our work, there's only a small window right now for that correction, a matter of just a few weeks. So we think it's going to be kind of a brief correction, uh, maybe some hard down days, uh, and then uh, maybe get one more rally to these highs or a little bit better before we get into what we think is a spring spring summer major correction coming in the stock market so uh, we want to see how this uh, near-term period goes uh, before we uh, make any big calls right here uh, and but I think the big biggest call is that the percentage gains that I think we can get in the stock market now are probably one-fifth of what we think the risk is in the stock market right now. Five to one risk rewards, upside versus downside. That's the way we're gonna make it right now for coming months. Let's take a look now at what happened in the stock market uh, over this last week as we look at ES, that's the 60 minute S&P chart that we always show you right now with some sense of the background news of what moved markets during the week. The gray areas are the overnight trading, the white areas are the pit trading, the regular trading hours. And you can see that right there. Um, what we have now looking at is the uh, uh, these um, one hour bars. And what you can see here is that there was Monday uh, overnight some pretty good selling in here. This was about Deutsche Bank right there uh, having some more trouble. Also, um, in the background news, uh, in France, uh, Juppie out and Le Pen uh, gained in the polls 
based on that so that uh, was helping the markets move but you know there was a big tweet storm from Donald Trump that day uh, as he was claiming that uh, President Obama wiretapped him uh, basically said it without any proof uh, and uh, really stirred things up there that got the markets uh, pretty weak add to that North Korea North Korea fires four missiles and uh, market correction chatter really started to uh, come up. I could see that in a lot of articles that were being printed, a lot of analyst commentary. So the stock market was weak. It broke, but then had a late rebound right in there. Tuesday, uh, well, the news about uh, the Obamacare replacement comes out, and uh, that certainly looks like another entitlement to me uh, as uh, between two and $14,000 a year uh, will be uh, a, a credit back to each uh, person, and uh, that is uh, pretty extraordinary, um, and that's uh, definitely a consideration uh, when you write to your congressman about this Obamacare replacement. You know, there got to be some way better than that. Many Republicans are balking at it, calling Obamacare light. Rand Paul, uh, that was what he said to it right there. This is certainly not the repeal replace that we heard over all those months. And the big news really right in here is that uh, Donald J. Trump attacked the drug companies, uh, saying that he was going to push down drug pricing. The market was really soft all day after that and bitcoin had a big hit that day as uh, china announced uh, some competing digital currencies stocks really very choppy and ticked down pretty good Wednesday, the ADP came out, showed some pretty good strong numbers there, uh, pretty much foreshadowing uh, decent payrolls uh, that came out on Friday. Draghi was talking, said he's starting to see inflation signals, but on Thursday, uh, he really seemed very, very dovish uh, when they gave when the ECB news came out. Um, banks uh, rallied, and they got you the market rallying early in the day. There was European banks rallying, uh, there was banks uh, in the United States following it. It's all based on stronger data out of the UK about talk of inflation uh, in all of the Eurozone. And when that happens, you start looking at higher rates there. By the way, that would be um, uh, neg uh, good for banks, as they say, but you know, negative probably overall for the stock market uh, with competing higher interest rates and uh, certainly not good for banks. And the banks couldn't hold it. In fact, they made some tops in here in the first few hours. And then you see that we got the market rolling over here on Wednesday. So take a look at the charts on the banks. Uh, and you'll see what happened on Wednesday as you had some reversals in there. And that set up maybe some uh, pretty good intermediate tops in the banks. So uh, stocks rally and fade, and that was really all with the banks. Thursday, we got uh, the ECB news comes out. They hold, uh, despite inflation, Draghi remains exceptionally dovish. World markets uh, were lower, and uh, oil plunged. I mean, oil was down at 1.5.5%, didn't finish much better than that. It drove down the oil stocks. Note this uh, green faded uh, shaded area. I've had that in there now for a couple of weeks because I felt that was important area. Note that it went below it and then recovered. Now that shows that it is a support area, but still even getting there is bad news for the stock market. And uh, we are seeing uh, Friday as uh, the news came out uh, of the payroll numbers and stocks rallied overnight in all of Europe pushed uh, up here but then we were up like 12 13 points in the S&P 500 and then the market turned down again you can see here at midday how things have really changed um, we have a pretty significant uh, tone change here in the markets as we uh, now are getting days where the market rallies and sells off there are now sellers in the market 
and there is a deterioration going on in the quality of the rallies and uh, certainly in the chart patterns. Take a look at uh, what's coming up this week as far as the earnings and economic calendar goes. Very little in the way of earnings. Thursday brings before the opening Dollar General and after the close Adobe. And then uh, on Friday before the opening is Tiffany. The big event for the week uh, that we have listed here, as you could see, on Wednesday is the FOMC meeting, and that uh, meeting will, uh, uh, at 2 o'clock Eastern time, we get the announcement. 2.30, there will be a press conference uh, with Fed Chair Yellen, and uh, that will, uh, I'd say, most certainly uh, be uh, about uh, the rate situation going forward for the rest of the year because it's pretty certain that uh, going uh, into this meeting, they're all ready to raise rates, and uh, we're going to see that, I'm pretty sure, uh, on uh, Wednesday. So we'll see how the markets react uh, to that, and uh, my guess is that uh, it, when they raise rates, you're probably going to see bonds maybe tick down a little bit, but then recover as bonds do start to get ready for a rebound in here. So you're sure you're a bond trader, watch for that kind of action. All right, that's the uh, opening uh, commentary right there, and uh, we're going to come back in a couple seconds with the best of the week. All right, for the best stocks of the week, we do this every single week. We look at the stocks that uh, have uh, had news, basically, and have uh, moved the market uh, up in in some significant way or down in some significant way, at least the mar their own market, or uh, affected the groups that they trade in. So we look at these uh, stocks, and uh, often the big stocks, the stuff that moved up, they might be setting up as short side trades the ones that move down may be long side trades as a matter of fact we're going to talk about some potential long side trades in the worst of the week uh, because some stuff has moved down to pretty important areas let's take a look though at the very best stock of the week which in my opinion is one of the worst stocks there is but is getting a bounce and that is Sears SHLD let's take a look here as we put up the weekly chart in Sears and you can see this long down trend that has been going on in Sears as the company has essentially just uh, come apart. Uh, $46 high up there in uh, two years ago and uh, trades down to five and a half. When the stock was in the 20s, we thought it was going under 10. We said it was going into single digits and that it did. And now you could see the rally and sell off and rally and sell off. You could see that right there and the rally. You can see as the cycles up here, right? Right there and uh, so we're in this rally mode that is uh, within this big downtrend the news there well they closed their sale they sold craftsmen which is a good company a uh, good subsidiary of those they're taking the money and putting some of that into their pension funds so it's essentially solidifying the company but does it make it a whole well far from that uh, as uh, Sears came out uh, those uh, the Kmart stores are just horrible and uh, as far as Sears goes well there may be something left to them but they've got to figure out how to survive in this digital world take a look now we're going to talk about the home builders now beginning of the year I picked a couple of home builders out uh, as I thought would be the best stocks of the year yeah I thought rates were going to go up however rates go up because economics support rates going up and my uh, assumption was was that there would be uh, a period where um, the prospects for better economic growth um, were going to lift the home builders. And what's the difference if mortgage rates are, you know, three and a quarter percent or four percent? It doesn't matter. I once built a home and took an eleven percent mortgage in the '80s. So, uh, and I know that the homes get built and get sold, and four percent is not going to make all that kind of a difference. And we're a long way from four percent on mortgage mortgage rates right now. So I was bullish on these stocks, and this week was a good week for them. Lennar up 7%, uh, Pulte Home up 6%, Toll and DR Horton uh, both up 
uh, 5%, 4%. I want to take a look at the two bigger movers in the group, and that is Lennar and Toll. And uh, you can see in here what uh, we were looking at as we came into the end of the year. We felt that it was getting ready to have a move uh, continued on the upside. Here's the end of the year right here. And uh, we get this uh, nice move up 12% so far on the year. It moves up right over here. This is the resistance area. We're looking, see these cycle patterns? They point uh, to areas where there is downside corrections. Well, every single one of them, you see that? So we're in one right now. We're going to look for a decline here over the next month. We think it's going to be very, very viable. And uh, again, this was on my list of stocks that were the best for 2017. You could see that right there. And you could see the same thing here when you look at Pulte Home up 6% on the week uh, as it has uh, this uh, nice gain for the year. How about 31% on the year already? It was in this support zone. I felt it really had explosive power. And there you go. Uh, this big giant move. And uh, now we think uh, again, the same thing in here. If you look at all of the corrective phases in the cycles, correction here, correction right in here and here and here. And that's where we are right now. We'll look for two, three weeks on the downside and then moving up to new highs again. I believe if it does that, you're going to get a pretty good buying opportunity between 22 and 23 for the next move on the upside. So both of these stocks strong for the week, big gains for the year, and uh, still liking them. And I still think you buy the dip that comes in there. Trip uh, Advisors, the next one we're going to look at in here. This one pops 6% on the week uh, as um, there were a rumors on Wednesday. Let's put up the daily chart and you could see in here what's going on. First of all, you have this big downside gap right over here as it failed from the 89 day moving average. You can see we put that kind of note in there on our charts. And uh, then it had this big break on the downside. Negative momentum clicks in. You can see the red bars here on the volume bars. That's the negative or the red bars here are negative momentum. And uh, then it breaks down and now you could see it's still negative momentum see that big up day right there on Wednesday there was some rumors out there about trip and uh, that's really negative pattern I don't see the bottom in here unless somebody does come in and grab them up and buy them out until way out here in the June area, June or July. That's where we think the stock market major correction is going to end. So I'm not stepping up and buying this one based on the rumors, but it was a big gainer on the week. EXPE up 4.5% or so on the week in the same group. This is a much, much better pattern. And you can see the way it trades. It trades in big cycles. See the big cycle right here and the big cycle right here. Notice how well it's timed. Notice the two pieces. One, two, one, two, one, and two. So we're rallying right in here. This is a much better pattern. We would look for some further rally, some kind of a pullback, and then moving up again later in the year. So uh, if you are uh, interested in one of the online travel companies, uh, I would really say that uh, Trip is probably not the one, but uh, Expedia may be an opportunity there. Take a look now, one more stock here in the best of the week, and that is ATVI. Take a look at, uh, it's not the one in here, it's, a, it's Activision, right? A-C-T-I? Uh, I don't know which how to spell that, A-T-V-I. All right, there it is. That's a weird one, right? Couldn't get that in there. Here is the Activision, and uh, this is up 5% on the week, continuing to soar in here. Again, we do cycle analysis. Cycle analysis is a visual and uh, certainly observational uh, way to see money flow as it moves in and out of stocks. The ri there's rising phases and there are declining phases. So you can see how the rising phase is long, the declining phase is short in duration. That is bullish. It's called a right-hand translation. This is the rising phase and the declining phase. You can see it perfectly timed and the next rising phase. It is unusual for this to be negatively configured and for the next rally to go to a new high. 
As a matter of fact, that often makes major tops when you do that because you build megaphones when you do that. And here you could see a megaphone top forming right in there. We believe we're at the top of the megaphone top. <laughs> As you could see right there, it might have a little more ground to go, but we're going to get into this downward corrective phase. You see that right over here and the downside it brought? This brought some modest downside, but still did fall for a month. This fell for six weeks. So each of these declining zones brings you a pretty good correction. We're at the top of the megaphone right there. And it says to me that, well, five percent gain on this one it's accelerating based on an earnings gap so here's the daily chart right over here here's why you don't fade high volume gaps because well they usually go higher and that's what this one did i think it's running out of steam when i uh, look here and apply our option bias formula to that and i can't show you that because it's proprietary it is now a p1 orange that is the most extreme overbought we rate it and i'm going to get that Activision right now at the top of this megaphone is going to begin a correction pretty soon. So up 5% on the week. And I'm thinking that basically that's about it for Activision. That's the best of the week. And in a moment, we'll have the worst. All right, for the worst of the week, we're going to look at a number of stocks in here. By far, the worst group for the week was energy, just the, filled with energy. Uh, big decliners for the week. The biggest decliner was WLL, that's Whiting Petroleum, 13%, in the driller category, which we believe are getting soon to where they're going to reverse back to the upside. Noble Corp down 10%, Diamond Offshore down 10 uh, Transocean, that's RIG down 10% and neighbor down about 8%. So uh, that group definitely the worst group of the week. We're going to put up the chart of WLL. This is not one I trade very much. It's pretty thin. A lot of people though I know do follow it and uh, so we keep our cycle rhythms in here. There looks to be a nested cycle right in here. So this decline that you have right there looks like it goes to uh, mid late March. You can see how we have that forecasted in there. So not a great looking pattern in whiting and uh, well that pretty much goes with the breakdown that we're talking about in the oil patch. Noble Corp and E you can see in here we're looking for the potential for another couple of weeks of downside risk but there's a big base building in here and I like bases where you get big declines right in here and then you get the positive cycle pattern where it doesn't make a new low and then turns up so we're going to in the next couple of weeks I think get into some accumulation stage and I've talked about this group in past videos and uh, that we were in the risk of a last uh, decline coming in here and that's what we're really getting diamond offshore uh, we're looking at right there you see a very similar pattern it's not quite as good because it's now equaling the last low still in the next week or two we're getting into a period where we should get a bottom and begin to get a rebound this is a much better pattern in transocean than either of those that we're showing what makes it a better pattern well this bullish stair step upward movement we're getting we're in the final weeks those blue timing spikes tell you we should be turning up again right on the 34 week moving average it tends to get a little bit below that but again Again, we believe that we're in the accumulation area in uh, there also and a neighbors NBR you can see right there uh, as it gets this big hit and this one still has a few weeks so wanted to put this one up you could see that maybe this one would not be the best one of the ones we look at uh, Noble Corp Diamond Offshore Transocean I think those are three that you could start to nibble on in the next week or so to get some upside movement in there as oil well, get some fake rebound to the upside uh, over coming weeks. So uh, we'll take a look now at uh, a stock in the steel category. Interesting that 
you know, here we were with steels exploding to the upside, and it was all about Donald Trump's fiscal policy uh, and that there was going to be a lot of spending. Now we're starting to have the argument about the budget, and uh, that's uh, going to go a long way to cool the jets from the buyers in the uh, materials and steel category. In fact, Schnitzer, uh, which uh, has no news out for the week, has a very bad breakdown in the chart. I want to show you this breakdown because uh, it speaks a lot to the to, to cycle analysis. The key is is that when you break a significant cycle low and then it moves below that level, you get into a period of decline through the end of the cycle timing. Now, when you, you know, rally and make higher bottoms, then you're in solid territory. And this one had a big break right there and then rallied and then broke below that cycle bottom, which is right here. You can see that. That cycle breakdown is really bad news. And it's bad news for the rest of the group, too. Now, uh, U.S. Steel has a much better pattern. It does not have a breakdown. Uh, and it's still down 5% for the week for the same reasons. If I were going to buy one for a bounce, it would not be Schnitzer. It would be uh, the um, much, much, much more interested in U.S. Steel than I am in Schnitzer. So here's the breakdown. Here's the low due in mid-April right over here. So you can see our projection right there has it declining into mid-April and a pretty bad looking pattern in there. Let's just switch over to the daily chart so you can see what's going on in here. And you can see that momentum in here, uh, which had turned positive for a couple of weeks, broke down right in here. The bars turn red. This is the slim ribbon right there, which is a great momentum indicator. Uh, and you can have that on your TOS platform. Uh, and uh, then uh, you can get some sense when things are an upward momentum or downward momentum. Here's a look at my double grid, two grid, two charts on a grid. Left side is the weekly, the right side is the daily, and that's the ones I analyze and work off of all the time. Schnitzer, a breakdown and a bad pattern in there. Solar did poorly also on the week. SPWR, take a look at this one. As it looks like it's got about another month to go in here. Um, this is uh, uh, has about a 10 PE, and it might be building a base in here. So this one might be viable in the next, we'll call it three, four weeks uh, uh, as it moves down. The big issue is, and I don't think this is going to be that big an issue for them, or the group is that there was some lowering of uh, PV prices uh, in India. So that spooked some of the buyers. And you got these breaks in here. Now, if you look at CSIQ, uh, and you're going to see the same thing in here, uh, as I think this is building an important base. Now, this is a screaming cheap stock. This is on my list of best stocks for 2017. Uh, and uh, full disclosure, it was also on my list of best stocks for 2016 which was wrong, though my list did fantastic. Uh, and uh, the estimates keep getting revised down in here, but forward PE is still at 7. Man, I want to buy this again uh, when it moves down in this area of 12, 13. I mean, I just think it's going to explode on the upside sometime this year. All you have to do is get Donald Trump to say one nice thing about alternative energy, and these stocks are going to fly on the upside. So that is a look at the uh, worst of the week with one more group to show you. It's the airlines. And I'm kind of isolating this out because I actually think the airlines are screaming by. First of all, cyclically, the, the way I see the patterns are bullish. Second of all, oil prices are breaking down. Their largest cost inputs are oil prices. So uh, with that in hand and the patterns basically positive, uh, I talked about this also in a recent video. I think that they're buys. So uh, the, the stock that really helped the group move down was Southwest Air. That's LUV. Uh, as it loses 7% on the week, American Airlines down 7% and United Airlines down about 4% on the week. Take a look at LUV, uh, which had that news that uh, had the market starting to struggle on the downside. Uh, sorry, that just in a moment, uh, 
as I'm waiting for my computer to revive. Uh, some reason I've got so many windows open on this computer, and I look at so much, and I've got scripts running, and I've got uh, uh, so much so much going on that it just sometimes uh, slows this computer down horribly. And believe me, it's a monster computer. So here is Southwest Air LUV. We'll show this chart, and you can see as it moves down in here, it's in this positive cycle phasing. If you know, if you get a little nervous about this pattern right in here, this double star evening star, and that maybe it doesn't do better than about 60 in the near term, it's still in this rising phase. Note the rising phases. Note how this one had an early breakdown and uh, there's your rising phases. So here we're still in it and you could still get more rally, but I'm not excited about this one as they talk about uh, guiding their, uh, their uh, seat revenues lower. It's not a good thing. But we have uh, in these other two I'm gonna show you, American Airlines, coming down to support here in the time frame that we expected the bottom coming down close to the 34 week moving average man this is in a buy area this by the way is also on my list of 14 best stocks for 2017 it was you know up a little bit now it's down a little bit and i'll bet you it's going to be up a lot before this year is over so that is american airlines that's one that i think is in a buy area right now and united airlines coming down to this 23.6 percent this is called a high and tight rectangle right in here and this is a consolidation coming to the bottom of these cycle patterns you can see in here united airline uh, uh American and Delta all nesting with lows due and entering into rally phases. We think that outside of a potential little more correction in here of a couple of weeks, that these stocks are likely to move pretty significantly on the upside. So that is uh, a look at some really, uh, Im I think, important patterns there and some pretty good opportunities talk about opportunities on my opening of the show and i think this is uh, some of them buying the airlines specifically american uh, united and delta uh in these next couple of weeks hopefully the market does correct in some hard way and give you give us some good opportunities in there that's the worst of the week and i'll be right back All right, we are back. I want to take just one moment before I get into the short-term view of the week. I want to talk to you about our Level 3 subscription. This is an amazing amount of information that you get from us, our Level 3 members. Starts out in Level 3 with getting uh, a, uh, every day we review our 80 best traded stocks. In other words, the ones that have the best volume, the most widely held, uh, the, um, the the highest option volume. So in there, there's uh, 80 symbols. It's about 52 stocks, ETFs, and then all of the futures also. Uh, so we, we do that analysis. We rank them in the long-term, intermediate, and short-term patterns. And then we also apply our option bias rankings, which is a phenomenal way to see if something is extreme in one direction or the other uh, that's got about a 65% probability that's better than two to one of uh, showing a reversal coming uh, pretty soon we put all of that on there plus all of our rankings uh, plus all of our trade setups on top of the rankings and setups we do four or five trade setups every single week and put out a model of what we think are the ways to approach that we do all of that on that table and our trade selection um, forms and uh, pu put that all out to you. you I want to, just want you to see how we have done here since we have been doing this. Uh, the uh, This is our front page at Ask Slim. And what I want you to see right here is that we have all, uh, done in this last year 346 setups. 
we rank them by how good of an opportunity it is for you to make a profit on those trades. For us, we trade them too. Um, and 62.4% of them gave you a great opportunity to make a profit. Only 27.2% did not. That's better than two to one probability. You almost can't get that there anywhere else. And then we let you know how we did in our last 15 setups. We had 10 positive, four negative, negative and one that didn't yield anything so that's we put that up there all the time and uh, if you uh, become a uh, level three subscriber you're going to get all of that uh, plus m more than 200 videos in our library and I put out five new videos every single week uh, so you, you actually could take a look at it all you can get a month's worth of that and you can get all of our videos to look at for the next month including our widely watched future speak uh, which we do on Wednesdays and our expanded short-term view for members all of that for you for just $43 for a one-month trial all you have to do is send an email to slim at askslim.com tell me you want the special link I'll send that to you you sign up try it for a month you don't like it you just cancel it and uh, no issue there at all and I think you're never going to get so much information for that unbelievable $43 so I really encourage you to um, sign up for that and take a look at all of our work it's pretty amazing all right so uh, we're going to move on to our short-term view for the stock market for the coming week <music> All right, so this is our short-term view for the stock market for the coming week. Uh, we put up our charts here where we look at the daily chart of the S&P 500 uh, and uh, get a sense for what we think is going on for the near term. We take an accountability of what we said in the last week um, and then uh, try to get some uh, a good picture in here about the short term for the stock market. Like I said in the beginning of the show, and our members are going to see that in the member video, so take that special uh, so that you could see that also. Um, the uh, uh, There are internal breakdowns going on in the stock market. The really short-term momentums are breaking down. The Russell had done that some time ago. And uh, other than the NASDAQ, which is holding up, we are getting some breakdowns in the short term going on. The uh, deterioration in here is a sign that we're going to have some significant correction. What we said about last week was that we thought it would be choppy and that it would be a small change. Um, and uh, that if there were upside attempts, they would likely fail we were going to be give us almost a full credit for that one even though there wasn't much in the way of size of moves in here uh, and uh, then say that this next week coming up is, is really the week that I think is going to be which tells us a lot about the story of the market. I showed you on the one hour chart of the ES that important green zone that it came down to bounced and now is coming down and approaching that again um, I think that we're in a period in here uh, in these next couple of days where we could try to get a little more rally, get a little more chop. But then I think come midweek, towards the end of the week and into the following week, the risks for the stock market are growing a lot. I think the next two weeks could have the biggest down move we have had since the election. Well, that's not a big statement because we've hardly had any down moves since the election but we haven't had a one percent decline in quite a number of days i think it's over a hundred and i think that one percent decline is coming in the stock market sometime in the next two weeks it very well could be in the next week a little hard to pinpoint it but i'm going to show you the patterns that we're in right now and what i'm talking about 
So here is that uh, daily chart of the S&P 500. And what I'm looking at right now are these cycles, 18 days, 19 days, 20 days. Really interesting, right? That's these right in here. You could see that as the, those are the idealized cycle brackets. This one, 18 days in an incredibly strong uh, cycle pattern right there. And then we had only a three-day rally, and it started to come down. And you see it got down right to that short-term cycle support right there. It should not get there if it was strong. That's a bad sign. And that's why we believe that where we are right now is that we're in this little rally right there. You see that right there? So what we've already done is this. And now, since we've done that and uh, just threatened the low in here, there's not much more to go. A little upside resistance right there in the market and then moving to the downside. So that minor declining resistance, that's, I don't know, 2377 uh, up to about uh, 2383. We could pop in there in the next day or two, I suppose, but the risks are really picking up. And right in here where we get these two nested cycles coming down with this bigger one right over here, this is where that whole bigger correction can come. I'm not sure if it's 3% or 5% or 7%, but we're getting into a risky period for the stock market now. And I'm going to call it a down week, maybe a day or two holding up and then moving to the downside. I talked about the um, VIX uh, when I did our member video last week uh, that implied volatilities had maybe a little bit more time to go another week or so uh, or two before they started to move up. I actually think that implied volatilities in the next couple of weeks are going to get a pop now. They're getting into that time period. And uh, so for those option traders, uh, I think you got to watch out for that. We're entering into a pretty risky period. And uh, I think the stock market over the next two weeks is going to have some pretty good downside. Bold call? Well, maybe. But after you know, six straight weeks on the upside and now giving some breakdown and seeing the internals go to the downside. I think the odds are here that we're going to get some better movement to the downside and probably buying opportunities in a lot of groups. That's the show for the week. Hope you've loved it. Send me emails, comments. Uh, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you put a little check on, uh, a little click on the thumbs up so that uh, I know you're paying attention. And uh, then uh, I will see you in the next week. We're always wishing you great trading.